Check it out. It's foggy. It's been raining for like, feels like 30 days and 30 nights. That's what it feels like. But we finally got a break in the rain. This is one day that uh, it's not going to rain. And then tomorrow it's going to rain like crazy. And then it's going to kind of get out of here and kind of be a little bit warm like uh, a couple days after that. So we're going to take the opportunity to kind of slide out here on a small little local lake today and hopefully catch us a couple. You know, just to me, after all this rain and changing conditions, it feels like there's going to be a crankbait bite. So I've got like Spro Little John, a rock crawler. I've got a couple other square wheels tied on. Lots of wintertime crankbaits, kind of what I've got tied on today. And then I've got literally one other bait, which is a jig. So I've got like four or five crankbaits and then a jig. And we're going to just kind of cover water today and kind of do just some standard textbook fall fishing. So let's jump around a little bit, see if we can't get us a bite or two on the old cranking plug. So should be fun. I've got a bunch of different depth crankbaits and we're going to just see where we can get some bites at. So. Let's roll. Man, I just kind of, I've only been fishing for, I don't know, three minutes, two minutes, but I'm just kind of surprised at just how clear the water is after all this rain we've had. It makes sense. There's a, the river system for this lake is kind of out that way. And that's where the water kind of comes down the river and out the dam and goes down to the next little lake. But uh, still surprising to me just how clear it is. I mean, we've got, I don't know how many feet of visibility right here, four or five feet of visibility right here in kind of one of the predominant sections of this lake. So it's really gonna change the way you're gonna wanna fish them, which I'm glad I've got this rock crawler on because it gets down there, you know, eight feet deep, nine feet deep or something like that. And whenever the water's got four or five feet of visibility, I just don't like fishing two feet deep typically. Mm. Got me a little bite under there. It's really surprised I didn't hook him because he seemed to have it pretty decent. All right, we're pulling up right now to one of the, I mean, just super obvious cold water cranking type of places. Just a big bluff, chunk rock, point. It's just a point that's just got a ton of rock around it of all different sizes, everything from pea gravel, which is right here, all the way around to giant chunk rock, which is, you know, straight, straight in front of the boat right there, about 50, 70 yards. So literally right here, just a perfect little place to crank in the winter. No matter what type of rock they're on, you're gonna hit some of it here. And then you've got that big bluff rock with some super steep drops that them spotted bass always like to hang out on. So the largemouth are the one, or the fish that you gotta kinda of figure out where they're sitting that day. Sometimes they'll be on the bluffy rock, sometimes they'll be on the pea gravel, sometimes they'll be just anywhere. The spots, they typically are on the bluffy stuff. Typically, that's just where they're at more times than not. Doesn't matter if it's hot, cold, in the middle, they spawn on the flat stuff, and other than that, they pretty much live on the bluffy type stuff. So the largemouth are the ones you gotta kinda figure out, and the benefit to fishing the bluffy type stuff is you're gonna typically catch spots no matter what, and if there's a day with largemouth are there, you can have a really good day, but consistency is gonna be a little bit better on the bluffier style banks, which when you go fishing big rocks with crankbaits, you're gonna get hung up a little bit. This is actually you know, one of the best baits for coming through these rocks. I mean, I'm hitting giant rocks every single cast, just the entirety of the cast. Like right now, I'm just, I can feel it just mowing over rocks. It's one of the most, you know, weedless baits for fishing around, you know, these big chunk rocks. And on pea gravel and stuff, you literally can't get it hung, which is pretty typical for pea gravel. You don't get hung on that too much anyways, but it's just a really good bait for throwing around rocks. That's why it's called the rock crawler because uh, it's the rock crawling bait. That's what it is, man. All right. Time to change baits. Time to pick up the old little John. See if they'll bite this thing. It's 
crazy when you switch from that rock crawler to the Little John, how much more thump that rock crawler has than the Little John. But the Little John still actually has a good bit of thump for a bait of its size. So it just shows exactly what that rock crawler does under the water. It just has so much thump. And the trick to fishing that rock crawler is uh, get it down there, connect with the rocks, get it to where it's really got good contact with the rocks, and then reel it as slow as you can and keep contact with the bottom and just let that thing thump and wander back and forth and wiggle off them rocks. That's how you have the best results. At least that's how I've had the best results catching a lot of fish on that rock crawler. So, Little John, throw that sucker everywhere. Wind it fast, wind it slow, grind the bill off, throw it over trees, lay downs, don't even touch the bottom, whatever. It's just the right profile to get a whole lot of bites. Hey, a little bitty one though. Look at that. Look at that little sucker. I think this crankbait's a little bit too bright for this uh, watercolor, but we still sling it anyways. Look at that. <laughs> little spot. Tiny little spot. Oh, it's a good one. Dang. Dad gum it. That one just came right up out of that little treetop and I watched him come up and eat it like a dang swim jig bite. And I hooked him for a second. He just did not stay pegged. Hold on a second. There we go, on the rock crawler. Little spotted bass. There's one. Little spot. My drag's too tight on this one. Barely got him. But that counts as gotten him. Well, at first, whenever I had him hooked, I actually had the front hook in his mouth. And then you can see right there, that's about how long it is from where I hooked him finally. So that's what happened. I had him hooked and then he hooked himself and threw the initial hook. So luckily these hooks are super sharp and snagged him because I would have lost him otherwise. But I seen him when he first came up and he rolled down he actually had the hook in his mouth. I had him hooked pretty well. And then it came off, so. There's one, little one. What do we got here? Little low spotted bass. I got him hooked good. Little 12 incher. Probably a keeper. All right. We cranked the other side of the bridge earlier. We're gonna just pull up and crank this side of the bridge. It should be. The bridge is just such a good winter time. I mean, they're kind of good all the time, to be honest with you. It's just always fish caught on bridges, but especially in the winter or late fall when the fish are on a lot of shad and bait and stuff just kind of the focal point for everything you know so crank around this bridge a little bit and maybe lean back on one or two oh i got nailed There's a big one. Gosh, what do I got? Catfish or something? Stripe. 
foul hooked a carp. Don't feel too bassy, I can tell you that much. Gosh. I guess we'll just chase you across the lake. Come on up here. You just can't put that much heat on them with the 10 pound line. Gosh. I think I got a carp foul hooked. It's my opinion, but usually they don't stay on this long. Strike. Dude. My heart just sank. I, I pulled him up and he turned sideways and I didn't see the stripes on him at first. I thought <laughs> I thought it had like an eight pound freaking largemouth. I was like, oh my God. But we do got a strike. Which is what I was just talking about. This bridge is like the focal point for activity this time of year. So it's definitely a place where it could have been a catfish, a carp, you know, an eight pound largemouth. That's just kind of what happens around these bridges. So the fact that it is a big old stripe, you know, it makes sense. It's where the bait is. But he wasn't trying to eat a shad. He was trying to eat a dang crawl pappy. I'm gonna just go have me a seat right here. Prop my feet up on my extra battery I got right there and lay in my fish. Come on. These things are strong, man. Stop it. Act like you got some sense now. So, really didn't want to get a dang treble hook in my hand over a striper. I can promise you that. Pretty good one. On the old bridge, he thumped it on the side of that little riprap bank over there. Just let him go. Uh-oh. What you doing, buddy? There he goes. I was about to grab him. Luckily didn't have to. What's up? I'm at the lake still. Where you at? Like 10 minutes. Okay. Give me another one. Nice little spotted bass. Just caught a stripe. Very next cast, caught a spot. Nothing wrong with that. I like the spots better, in case you're wondering. But, that's what we're doing. Out here crawling a rock crawler. That Mercury ain't quite as intimidating as my other one, is it? That 250 Pro XS sounds a little bit better. But, we got out here, there's a break in the rain today. Got to come out here, throw a crankbait around. Caught us a couple, caught a big stripe. Y'all seen that? I mean, big stripe for me, because I don't fish for stripes. So, any stripe that's over like a pound, it's a pretty dang big one for me, because I don't catch them that often. But I do catch them in the winter, typically. So, we had fun today. Got out here, threw that rock crawl around. Y'all kind of got to see kind of the different types of banks that I was fishing. I'll, even though I didn't catch some off of some of the banks that I was fishing, I tried to, I tried to probably include some of that stuff so y'all can see why I picked up certain baits and where I picked up the certain baits at. So I'm gonna leave some of that in there even though I didn't catch fish, more so y'all can see why I picked the Little John or why I picked the Rock Crawler or why I picked the Square Bill or whatever. So pretty fun though. Gotta come out here, catch some spotted bass, bend a line, I mean, stretch a line and bend a rod. That's what we did today. Had fun, hope y'all enjoyed it. 
going to try to talk Miss Hunter into fishing a tournament out here with me in the morning. So, had a good time. Tomorrow, hopefully, we'll catch them a little bit bigger. So, we'll see y'all. Appreciate it, guys. Mm -hmm.